Are you ready to get smart with money? Well, this new Netflix documentary promises to teach you how, and today I'm gonna to be sharing my thoughts on it. Hi everyone, this is Camilla the Focus Spender and welcome to my channel where I teach you how to get out of debt, save more money and invest so that you can build wealth and leave a lasting legacy. So today I'm gonna to be giving you an unsponsored review of the new Netflix documentary, Get Smart With Money. So this documentary follows four different individuals and their families in a year of their life and them trying to get smart with money. And they're working with four financial coaches. We have Mr. Money Mustache, Tiffany Aliche, the budget nista. We have Ross Mack of Maconomics, and we have Paula Pan of Afford Anything. And so these coaches work with these individuals for one full year of their life. So we have a woman who is married, she has two children, and she is struggling with her finances because she has all this debt. We have a football player who has not played football in three years and is trying to figure out what is next for him if he can never play football again and how is he gonna manage the money that he made playing football that is quickly dwindling away. We also have a woman who is a bartender and a restaurant server and she really wants to fulfill her lifelong passion of being an artist and a fashion designer, but she can't because she is stuck in a dead end job. And then finally we have another couple who the husband is a stay at home dad because he lost his engineering job during the pandemic. And the wife is, I believe a psychotherapist and she's making a ton of money, but they're also spending a ton of money. So the people in this documentary have vastly different financial lives from the paycheck to paycheck to the football star. But the key thing is that none of them really know how to manage the money that they have, whether they don't have enough to manage or whether they have a lot to manage, but they're not making smart financial decisions. And so these coaches work with them for a full year of their life trying to help them figure things out. So I'll just go over what I liked about the documentary and what I didn't like about the documentary. So starting off with the things that I liked about the documentary, I really appreciated the fact that they use really different families and people in really different financial lives, especially looking at the person that was living paycheck to paycheck and helping this person figure out how to bring in more income. Because at the end of the day, sometimes it's not enough to just save your way to wealth. You cannot save your way to becoming wealthy. Sometimes you have to figure out a way to earn more income. And this documentary really sheds a light on the fact that sometimes the money that you make is just not enough. And it really helped this woman figure out how she could make more money over the course of the year. Another thing that I liked about the documentary is that it was a full year of their lives. I have done financial coaching in the past. Sometimes I'm doing it, sometimes I'm not. Right now I'm not. And honestly, one of the things that frustrated me about doing coaching is that a lot of times people really want a quick fix. They see things happen so fast on TV. You watch HGTV, and even though you're watching a 30 minute or hour long program, you see someone with a house that looked like nothing and overnight, it's a beautiful mansion. People really want things to happen overnight. And I see that happening when people are trying to work with their finances. People really expect that they can turn around their financial life and all of a sudden have all this money within four to six weeks, maybe two months if you really push them. People kind of ignore the fact that it took you a lifetime to get into the financial situation that you're in right now. So it's gonna take some time to get out of that situation. It might take a year, it might take two years, but it's not gonna be an overnight process. And I really appreciated the fact that they work with these people for a, a length of time because that way they were able to show when bad things happened, when you know that job didn't happen, or when something broke down, or when your mental health was telling you you don't want to save any more money. You just, you know, you don't want to be on this financial journey anymore. It really, you know, showcases that fact. Now, a couple of things that I did not like about the documentary is that I would have liked to see a lot more of the actual process. Now, I know this is a documentary, and at the very beginning, they did put a disclaimer that this is not to offer you individual financial advice. So I'm sure they had to be somewhat careful about how much they were sharing. I know these coaches worked with these people for a full year, and they were meeting with them like once a week or once a month. So they really did spend a lot of time with them, but you really did not get to see that in the documentary. You saw them at three months, you saw them at six months, nine months, and a year, but it really didn't show 
all of the work that they did. And then another thing I didn't like is that because they weren't showing all the process, you really didn't get to see the full person's financial situation. So thinking about the football player, we got to see the fact that, you know, he hadn't played football in three years and he didn't have income coming in, but he did make money while playing football. And so they talked about like, you know, how much money he spent when he started playing football. And you know that he spent a lot of money, you know, every single month and that he didn't have income coming in. And his issue is that he wasn't investing his money. It never really showed like his day-to-day -day expenses and the things that he might have cut out so that he could start investing. He also has a partner and I don't have any sense of like if she was contributing financially to the situation or if they were just living off of his paycheck. So I really would have loved to have seen a fuller picture of everyone's financial life and seen more of the process. That being said, I did still really enjoy this documentary. I think for someone like me, sometimes I feel like you just need to see other people doing it and it gives you motivation. Personally, when my house is a mess, I will turn on YouTube and I will watch a couple cleaning videos and that will help me get motivated to start cleaning. And I think something like this will help people to, it may not teach them how to change their finances altogether, but it might help them get their mindset right in terms of thinking about, okay, this person looks kind of like me and this is what they're doing to fix their finances. Maybe it's time for me to get started with fixing my finances. And now it's time for me to look up resources on how to do it. And then also, I just am curious about other people's financial lives. And I just wanted to see like how everybody was gonna end up. So I think this was a really good documentary in terms of that. And I do recommend that you watch it. So if you've watched the documentary, be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you haven't, Take some time. It's only about an hour and a half long. Give it a try, watch it. And then you can always come back to YouTube and look at my videos and start to implement all the things now that you are totally ready to get your money right. If you're not following me on social media, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok kind of at Focus Spender. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Thanks, bye-bye.